Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so for today's moneymaker, we'll be taking a look at killing the Kraken. This is the boss form of the Cave Kraken. And I decided to do this because I finally got a task to kill Cave Kraken. So I was assigned over 100, and I figured that I'd make a video over it instead of a couple days ago when I got assigned a boss task, which only gave me about 35. I wanted to get more kills in there so we can get a more accurate GP per hour, I guess you could say. So let's take a look at it. Now this page does assume 60 kills per hour, but it says here that with maximum efficiency, you can get 90 kills per hour. Of course, this is if you're using some very expensive gear as well, and I actually don't have access to all of the gear that they recommend, but we'll use whatever we have. So this is the gear setup that I decided to go with. I have the Imbued Magic Cape, the Slayer Helmet, the Occult Necklace, Full Ancestrals, Eternal Boots, Tormented Bracelet, Ring of Suffering, the Dragonfire Ward for its defensive bonuses, the Trident of the Swamp E, which holds 20,000 charges, and I'm also trying out this Hunter's Crossbow with Kebit Bolts. Inventory is just Sharks, some Cape Switches, and a Rune Pouch to hold some of the Rune Drops. And just in case you are curious on what gear to bring, from most effective to least effective, you can find this on the Kraken strategy page of the OSRS wiki. Now, as for how to get to the area, I will be using fairy rings, so if you don't have the elite lumberage diary done, make sure you bring a drama and stuff. Go ahead and configure. The code is AKQ. This will take us to the Piscatoris Hunter area. And then from here, we can run west. After some time, you'll make your way over to a cave with somebody standing right above it into the cave, and then just head north. These are where you can kill the regular cave kraken, and then this is where you can kill the boss in this area over here. We're going to be using an instance, which does cost 25,000 coins, but I think it's well worth it. So it says any items you leave in here will be lost, that is true if you drop any, but with the new death mechanics, you will no longer lose your items if you die in here. There will be a gravestone outside that you can come back for. Before the death mechanics update, you would have lost all your items in here, except for the three or four that you keep if you have your protect item prayer on. But now, you're pretty much safe to bring whatever you want, so I definitely recommend using the instance. Alright, so now we can go ahead and start this task. We have 107 Kraken that we can kill, so we'll see how long it takes us. I will be timing myself, and I guess I can go over the uh, method of fighting the boss. Very simple. Just switch to your ranged weapon. Disturb these whirlpools. Once all of them are disturbed, switch back to Mage and hit the Sensor Mass. And that's it. It's a very relaxed boss to kill. So normally whenever I got this for a Slayer task, I don't think I ever skipped it because it's a really fun boss to kill. Well, fun in terms of it's really AFK and it's easy money. So yeah. And of course, Kraken does drop some lovely drops such as the Rusty Sword. You love to see it. Now I do want to say you could bring your toxic blowpipe for its special attack to heal and if you do decide to do that then I recommend using it on the enormous tentacles and not on the kraken itself because I think kraken is highly resistant to range damage. And just a heads up protection prayers don't actually work here but you can use magic defense boosting prayers such as augury or mystic might. So since we have some prayer points I'll go ahead and just turn on augury to uh, tank a little bit. Normally, you don't really need to bring prayer potions unless you're bringing the imbued heart. If you have the imbued heart, then definitely bring it and use preserve so that the stats last longer. Kraken also drops some sand serums, which can restore your prayer, but I really don't recommend drinking them here since they are pretty valuable. Oh, and here's the uh, game tab. I currently have 1626 KC. And no, I have not received the Kraken pet yet, so that would be pretty awesome to get during this video. I feel like the Kraken pet really isn't that much of a rare pet, but it still looks really cool, so I'd be happy to get it. There are the Sanfu Serum that I was talking about earlier. 
Each one is worth about 27k, so definitely worth holding on to. Some pirate boots. Another very nice item to get, along with that rusty sword. Gotta say, the attack speed on this crossbow is actually pretty nice. I believe it's the same attack speed as a magic shortbow. Hey, there we go. There's the edible seaweed that we've been waiting for. A good source of food. So, I guess if you wanted to, you could bring runes to High Alk, but I chose to bring the rune pouch just to store all of the rune drops that we get. I could also bring my Explorer's Ring 4, but that would only work for about 30 High Alks, so... I mean, it would probably be more than enough uh, for this one task, but you know, I just didn't feel like bringing it. Another rune item, a rune warhammer. Soon these weapons will have a use. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could save a little bit of money by not using the instance. Again, the instance is only 25,000 coins, and if you use it, you're not going to get crashed. You don't have to worry about somebody crashing you, and it's also a lot easier to juggle the food that you get as drops. Because normally I think it despawns after like 2 minutes, but in an instance it'll be on the floor for 30 minutes. And it's pretty convenient, you don't even need to bring the coins with you, it'll just take the 25,000 coins straight from your bank. So besides having the chance at a pet, which is a 1 in 3,000 chance, there's also a jar of dirt here for a 1 in 1,000 chance, and it's not worth too much, so unless you're an Iron Man, you probably don't want to see that drop. I'd say probably the next exciting thing besides the pet drop is probably the Kraken Tentacle, valued at around 400k right now, and that's a 1 in 400 drop. And of course, the Trident of the Seas Fool, which is a 1 in 512 drop, valued at 746k. But I gotta say, the most attractive thing about this boss is the fact that it's just so chill, so AFK. You literally don't have to move from this spot. All of the drops land right at your feet, and you can shoot all the tentacles from this area with this crossbow. So, pretty chill, pretty nice. I'm happy to say that all of these sharks that were on the ground are now in my inventory. Uh, I think we passed the 10 second rule or 5 second rule, however many seconds it is. Uh, yeah, I think it's still good. We should be fine. Oh, Mystic Water Staff. Another item that'd be good for hiking. And I guess another shark is going on the ground. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I think we're done with our first trip. So I'm going to go ahead and head to the crafting guild to go bank and get some more supplies. We have 47 kills left. And that is kill number 1700. Some Chaos Runes, I'll take it, with plenty of sharks on the ground. A Mystic Rope Top, okay, another item we haven't seen yet. Pretty valuable, 71k. Alright, we have 10 more Kraken kills to go. Raw Monkfish, and we have one more kill to go, so let's see if we can get something special. Maybe a Unique, maybe a Pet. And there we go, Task Complete. And our last drop is Water Runes. And since we have two spaces in our inventory, might as well take the Pirate Boots. Not bad looking. Alright, so here's a look at all the loot we got from this one task. And how long it took us to finish the task. About an hour and a half. Let's go ahead and price check this. And in total, it's about 1.7 mil. Not a bad amount. Now we can go ahead and head over to the GE to sell it off and see the total profit we made from this one task. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to sell all of the items as fast as possible, but if you're planning on doing this, definitely put them in there for at least market price. There we go. Alright, so with everything sold off, our final price check is still close to about 1.7 mil, so not bad. So now we can go ahead and calculate the total profit we made from this one task of killing the Kraken. So if we take into account the cost of supplies, which was 637,265 GP, subtract that from the money we made, which was 1,697,818 GP, we get a grand total profit of 1,060,553 GP. And since this did take us over an hour, the hourly rate would be somewhere closer to about 700k GP per hour. But of course, if you have access to better gear and you're a lot more efficient than I am, then you can definitely make more money than I did here. Also, if we happen to get any uniques throughout this one task, that also would have bumped up the GP per hour. 
Here's a look at all of the loot from all of the kills that we got. It says 104, but there were a couple kills where we didn't get any loot, so it's not shown there. And here's a look at all of the XP that we managed to get. Some hit points, magic, and slayer XP. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.